ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد أجري تو أول وزجري تن أبو الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all like to welcome you all for continuation of our series Believing in the last day in its science. This is segment number 32. And inshallah, we proceeding for the first uh, sign of the last day among the major signs. Uh, what we spoke before in the last uh, five or seven segments was related to minor. So there is a minor science of the day of judgment, and there is a major science of the day of judgment, which we already had finished talking about the minor science. As for today, inshallah, we'll be starting with a general talk about major science, and after this, starting from tomorrow, inshallah, to take each one and we talk about it in details. The major signs shows you and indicates that the hour is more closer and is about to come. We, the Prophet ﷺ had told us about some of them and or most of them. He talks about Ad-Dukhan which is the smoke. He talks about the Adjjal, the Antichrist, the liar that he will claim that he is Allah. And we will talk about the Dabba, the beast. We talk about, inshallah, that the sun will rise from the west. And also the coming of, the second coming of Jesus son of Mary, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and blessing on him. And also we will talk about Juj, yeah, which Gag and Magag, the two big tribes. And we're talking about uh, the earthquake and the sinking of the earth. And after this about the fire that will come from Yemen and make people moving towards the land of gathering on the day of judgment. Uh, as for today, inshallah, we talk in general about this, okay? And the hadith is that related to this, but each one of them is going to have, inshallah, a class. Uh, Sister Area, are you here today? Yes, I'm here. Okay. In chapter 5, and it's going to be saying, Al-Alamat Al-Kubra, that major signs of the day judgment. Do you have this chapter? Yes. Please, would you can enough and uh, read for us, inshallah, and you try to put your foot on the brake a little bit. Inshallah. Thank you. There are major signs which will indicate that the hour is at hand. Okay. When they appear. 
we're going to start to give small training, inshallah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. So, inshallah, if you can remember that before you start, you put the basmala. So, because now you graduating now, okay? Go ahead. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Very good. And now you can go ahead. Read in Arabic or you can read in English, doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. I'll do English. There are major signs which will indicate that the hour is at hand. When they appear, the hour will be close behind them. Muslim narrated on the authority of Hudayfa ibn Sayyid al Ghafari. The Prophet ﷺ looked at us whilst we were discussing something. He said, what are you talking about? They said, we are talking about the hour. He said, it will not come until you see ten signs ahead of it. Okay, he ten. mentioned the smoke, mm -hmm. the jal, the beast, the rising of the sun from the west, the descent of Isa ibn Maryam, Yajuj and Majuj, and three landslides, one in the east, one in the west, and one in the Arabian Peninsula. And the last sign is a fire, which will emerge from Yemen and drive the people to their place of gathering. The major signs will come one after the other. Hardly any time will elapse between one and the next. The way they will follow one after another will be like what happens when a necklace breaks and the beads fall one after another. Mm -hmm. The first bead falls and the others follow it straight away. Al-Hakam narrated with a Sahih Isnad that Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu reported, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the signs are like beads next to one another on a string. When the string breaks, they follow one another. Okay, guys, we have to take in consideration that we're reading from the book of Sheikh Omar Suleiman Al Ashkar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him the best. And one uh, major thing that we have to know about his writing is that he a person who's careful about choosing and selecting the statements of the Prophet وسلم, he barely can find a weak narration or fabricated narration in his books. And this is the reason we recommended this book for the Muslims. You understand for them to read and to learn through them because we could not be taking any weak hadith or fabricated hadith, especially about matter of aqidah. This is part of our belief. Believing in the Day of Judgment is one of the main pillars of belief. Okay? So, go ahead. The Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said that a great war will happen between the Muslims and the Romans, which he called Malhama, a fierce battle. Then the Muslims will conquer Constantinople, then the Dajjal will emerge. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, When Bayt al-Maqdis, Jerusalem, will be flourishing, Yathrib will be in ruins. When Yathrib will be in ruins, the fierce battle will take place. When the fierce battle takes place, Constantinople will be conquered. When Constantinople is conquered, the Dajjal will emerge. Mm. This is narrated by Abu Dawood. What the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant was that these events would happen one after another. The reader will learn how the Muslims at that time will be in conflict with the Romans when they engage in a great battle, which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Malhama, a fierce battle. 
After they defeat them, they will conquer Constantinople. Then the Dajjal will emerge. After the Dajjal emerges, Isa will descend and kill the Dajjal. Then Yajuj and Majuj will emerge during the time of Isa, and Allah will destroy them during his time. The sequence of events up to this point is clear. Okay. As you said, the order of these events, maybe some of you will say, I could not remember or memorize all this. Okay. This only for information. You know that it's going to happen, going to take a place. But if you could not remember what is there, order of it is no harm, okay? But is the Prophet وسلم, is showing us how the things will come like, like he said, like a necklace. And when cut and one beads fall down, all of them will come one after the other. They close to each other, okay? Go ahead. With regard to the remaining signs, the exact sequence is not quite clear. The sun will rise from the west, the beast of the earth will emerge, and the fire will emerge which will gather the people together. These things will certainly happen after the emergence of the Dajjal, the descent of Isa, and the emergence of Yajuj and Majuj, but which of them will precede the other? I mean the rising of the sun from the west, the emergence of the beast, and the fire gathering the people together. The hadith narrated by Muslim from Hudayfa clearly states that the fire from Yemen, which will gather the people together, will be the last of the signs. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned the ten major signs, and concerning the tenth sign, which is the fire, he said, and the last of that will be a fire which emerges from Yemen and will drive the people to their place of gathering. So there remain six signs, the rising of the sun from the west, the emergence of the beast, the smoke, and three landslides, one in the east, one in the west, and the third in the Arabian Peninsula. The rising of the sun from the west and the emergence of the beast will occur after Isa descends and kills the Dajjal. The destruction of Yajuj and Majuj will take place during his time, after mankind will become corrupt and Islam wiped out, and before the emergence of the fire, which will gather the people together. But which of them will come first, the rising of the sun from the west or the emergence of the beast? This is what we cannot be certain about. Because the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not make any definite statement concerning that. According to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, he heard the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, The first signs will be the rising of the sun from the west and the emergence of the beast to the people in the morning. Whichever of them comes first, the other will immediately follow. We cannot take this hadith to mean that the rising of the sun from the west will happen before the emergence of the Dajjal, the descent of Isa, and the emergence of Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, because the Prophet wasallam said, the first signs will be the rising of the sun from the west. What is most apparent from the reports is that the emergence of the Dajjal will be the first of the major signs which indicates that the regular state of affairs in most of the earth will be changed. That will end with the death of Isa ibn Maryam. The rising of the sun from the west will be the first of the signs, which indicate that the state of affairs in the heavens will be changed. That will end with the onset of the hour. Perhaps the emergence of the beast will occur on that day on which the sun rises from the west. Al-Hakam Abu Abdullah said, It seems that the rising of the sun from the west will happen before the emergence of the beast. Then the beast will emerge on that day or soon afterwards. With regard to the rest of the signs, 
the three landslides, and the smoke, we do not know their place in the sequence of the major signs. We have not seen anything in the Sahih text to describe that. Allah knows best. Amen. Zakallah khairan. Thank you very much. And basically, we get a general ideas about that the major signs of the day judgment are approximately 10. And in the next uh, episodes, inshallah, we're going to be taking each one individually and talk about the verses as well as the hadith that support this sign. And regardless, if we have a verse or authentic hadith, it is enough sufficient for us to know that this is true and is going to happen regardless what people can imagine or not imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable to do all the things and we have to be prepared every time because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as he said what the meaning is man mata faqad qamat qiyamatuhu whosoever dies Indeed, his judgment is already started. So we don't know if we're going to be there when all these things happen, but we know that death can approach us at any time. It's not going to knock on the door, it's not going to seek permission. So let's try our best, inshallah, to stick to the book of Allah and the authentic sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Try to do our best, inshallah, in the obedience of Allah and invite into this deen of Allah. So when we die, we die in the best condition, inshallah. This is going to be enough for today. Thank you for being here. If anybody have any comments, any question or correction, feel free to do so, inshallah. Sister Zahida, if you have anybody in the hallway or anything is written here or there before I depart. And there is somebody who wants to speak. I think Sister Zahida is on the phone. Should I bring him up? Sure, no problem. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome. Zakala. Uh, brother, is there uh, a hadith that says something to the effect that when the sun rises from the west, then the your book of deeds uh, closes? No, not the book of deeds will be closed, but the tawbah is not going to be accepted after this. The, the okay. tawbah, if somebody, as example, be, want to be a Muslim, because when you, you see the sun coming from the west instead of the east, now everybody will realize that what the Prophet was saying is true, because this is a major, major event, and it's going to be something obvious. So now they want to be a Muslim. This is not going to help. Yes. And Allah knows best. But are, can we still, okay, aside from accepting the shahada or taking the shahada, um, can we still accumulate good deeds in this time? Can you what? Accumulate good deeds, like hasanat? Can you continue making good deeds? No. Oh. Of course, because the main thing is that to be a Muslim, you see, we, even if we have some mistakes and some sins, and nobody is free from the sins, okay, it's still that we are not going to be in hellfire forever. You see? And there is a possibility that Allah even will forgive it, or that Allah will punish us for it, and after this we'll go to Jannah. Yes, everything will continue. But the main thing is about if you die on Islam, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And don't die unless you are on the state of total submission to Allah. 
but somebody understands that we have shortcoming, all of us as Muslims. It doesn't matter a student of knowledge or a scholar, a human being. كل ابن آدم خطاء, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, all sons of Adam are sinners, and the best of the sinners are those who repent. So, the chance is that you got in the bus or not. The bus left is too late. But you in the bus, as a Muslim, you are in the bus. Maybe that you are in a first class, maybe in the back seat, maybe you be standing because there is no seats, but you in the bus. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, with the mercy of Allah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Sister Zahida, did you finish your phone? Not yet. Okay, anybody? Anybody else? Any question? Any comments? Any correction? Looking forward to see you again tomorrow, inshallah. Same place, same time. Zakumullah khairan. Special thanks for all of you, as well as Sister Zahida and Sister Ariel and Sister Amira for not being here also. We'd like to thank you here. And please keep our brother Kazi in your dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him a shifa and healing, inshallah, and comfort his soul. Ameen. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, doing good, doing good. Well, what time do you have these rooms? The class is at 6 p.m. Eastern.